this is a PowerPoint on Ben 10's original 10. Starting at number one with Heat Blast. Heat Blast is a Pyronite. What that means is he is a kind of lava monster. He fires uh, fireballs out of his hand. He can absorb fire back into himself. He can even fly by making rocks levitate. Heat Blast is actually the first alien we see in the entire series. Uh, when Ben first picks up the watch in the first episode, he starts to burn down a forest. It's actually really fun if you uh, haven't seen the first episode in a long time. It really does feel very nostalgic. It, Heat Blast is a very, very fan favorite for that reason. He's the first one. Of course, he's the first one we see, and he's just, he's kind of cool. We see a lot of Pyronites in the series. A lot of them are hybrids as well, and he's just fun. I don't really know what more to say about, like, Heat Blast. He's not the most, he's not the most, like, complex character, especially out of the first ten. He's just a fire guy. He shoots fireballs. He's the, he's the fire guy, and he's really good at it. And honestly, what more do you need from a first alien to introduce you to a show? Then we get to number two, Wild Mutt. Wild Mutt is significantly more interesting, in my opinion, than uh, Heat Blast. Heat Blast is cool, yeah, he's the fire guy, but Wild Mutt provides a lot of things for Ben. Wild Mutt is a Vulpamancer, and Vulpamancers, they are blind, but they have incredibly heightened senses of smell and hearing, which allows them to be incredible in a lot of different scenarios. Of course, in any scenario where it's dark uh, and you can't really see, Vulpamancers are just incredibly useful, but... Wild Mutt is actually just, like, a crazy, crazy, uh, alien for Ben. He's incredibly agile, able to, like, uh, like, hold himself up with his big arms and, like, uh, and swing across bars. He's very strong, he's able to pick up, like, heavy metal objects and throw them, and he's just one of the most powerful aliens that Ben has early on in the series. Surprisingly. He's not used as, like, a heavy hitter very often, but, like, the things that he does are just crazy. He has incredible agility, and he's just... Really, really useful. I think that this might be one of Ben's most powerful aliens in the, of the original 10, but he never really shows that off. I, th I feel like it's just because, like, the design is a little weird for children back in, like, 2006, so they probably wouldn't have been as interested in this being one of Ben's most, like, used aliens compared to some of the other ones, but... I don't know. I really like Wild Mutt. It's definitely one of my favorite of the original 10. I'd say it's probably, like, my third or, like, third or fourth favorite, but, yeah. Then we have Diamond Head. This is the one that everyone knows about. Everyone knows that Diamond Head is, is, like, one of the most iconic aliens of the entire series. It's one of Ben's most used aliens. He even uses, like, he even says so himself. I've had a lot of practice with this one. But, yeah. Diamond Head is a Petrosapien, and what that means is he's, like, a crystal person. He has the ability to generate crystals, either, uh, like, forming his body and his hands into blades. He can, like, put crystals around his enemies to keep them in place, which he does to Vilgax. Diamond Head is actually one of only two aliens that beats Vilgax in single combat, which is insane. For only two aliens in the entire series that Ben has access to to be able to beat Vilgax, the other is way big, and that's way big. So, yeah, that says a lot. Diamond Head is just genuinely one of the coolest. It's definitely, I think Diamond Head is probably like my second favorite overall. I mean, just look at him. He's so awesome. Every He's one of the most versatile characters, or, sorry, versatile aliens that Ben has, has at his disposal. I cannot talk. And it's just, he's just really strong. Like, being able to fire projectiles, you know, uh, form crystal constructs, things like that are just so useful. And Ben in the show, even as uh, the original series, makes a great use of Diamond Head. Of course, he's expanded upon a lot more in Ultimate Alien, Alien Force, and Omniverse, but I won't get into that here. Uh, if you if you don't know, I would consider looking it up or watching the show, of course, but it's genuinely so cool. Then we have Accelerate. Accelerate is my favorite of the original 10. I have to say this. He's just so cool. Like, come on, dude. He's a, a, like a, a, a raptor kind of guy that's on, like, these, like, balls that act as skates. He has no friction because he has, uh, because he's a Kene... A Kene... Solarian. I cannot pronounce that word. I can't pronounce a lot of these names, but... And he has super speed. Super speed to the to the point that he actually can run and stop time. As seen in the episode where they're at a baseball game, he, you know, messes with the... The, the teams, he, can, he, like, forces a ball into a player's mitt, yada yada... And it's just awesome. I love speedsters. It's it's probably my favorite superpower overall. So Accelerate is definitely one of my favorite. And of course, he is the fastest uh, terrestrial alien that Ben has access to. It's not the fastest alien Ben has access to because we have you know characters that can fly. But on the ground, ex Accelerate and no one else. He is actually able to negate his own friction because he's a kinesolarian. 
cheese. And it's just, I don't know. What, what more do I say about it? He's got the super cool, like, speed skater helmet that closes down over him. He's got these cool, like, triangular hands. He's like a raptor. It's just so awesome. I feel like a little kid talking about Accelerate, but, like, what, what, what do I say? It's just so cool. Then we have Gray Matter. Gray Matter is a Galvin, and if you know anything about Ben 10, Galvins are incredibly smart. The creator of the Omnitrix, Asmuth, actually is a Galvin. Uh, Gray Matter is weird, because it's kind of up for debate if Gray Matter is Ben's smartest alien, uh, which is awkward, because if Gray Matter isn't Ben's smartest alien, what purpose does he serve, like, in a greater sense, right? Because he's incredibly small, he's not able to fight very well, and he, like, he's not, he's definitely not Ben's best alien when it comes to, like, tinkering and making objects, or making weapons, making machines, things like that, because that's definitely jury rig, like, not, not even within question, and then when it comes to, like, intelligence, it's very, it's very easy to argue that Brainstorm is at least as intelligent, maybe more, than Grey Matter, just because of things we see in the show. Brainstorm's able to, like, he defeated the evil team, I can't remember what they're called at the moment, that was fighting Ben in a matter of seconds by determining, like, the outcomes of different effects, like, just super super quickly he was able to determine the outcome of a fight how he should uh, work out a fight and eliminate all these different enemies just in a matter of seconds gray matter has never shown anything similar to that at all he's just been shown to be quote unquote really smart but he hasn't really done much with it his first appearance he like like uh removed wiring inside of a robot if i remember correctly it's been a while since i've watched the original series i will be honest but I don't know. And Grey Matter is definitely a controversial one. He's one of my least favorites as well. I just don't like him. He's he's weird. He's like a little frog guy. And like he's not like he's not like a cute frog because he's like this weird gray color. I don't know. Let's move on. Then we have four arms. Four arms is a Tetraman. Uh, and Tetramans, you know, they have four arms. They're incredibly strong. And four arms actually is an interesting case. Unlike all of the other aliens that we're talking about, four arms has like lore quote-unquote lore extra that I, that you have to talk about when you talk about him. And because of forearms, we actually learned that Ben, and when he turns into aliens, is kind of just better than other aliens of the species he turns into. Uh, in Omniverse, he actually fights uh, Luma, Princess Luma, who is the strongest Tetraman in the universe, right? And wins. And, you know, usually you'd be like, oh, what's the big deal about that? Female Tetraman are significantly stronger than male Tetraman. That is said specifically in the episode. So when Ben wins, that lets us know, hey, Ben's stronger than, you know, a Tetraman who's supposed to be significantly stronger than him. What does that mean? It means that the aliens that Ben turns into are kind of just better than the original versions that, you know, he's copying. We see that again with another alien, Bullfrag, where Bullfrag is just, like, significantly stronger, more agile, even, like, better looking, according to, uh, Atea, the Incursion Princess. So Ben is just, like, the ultimate life form when he turns into these aliens. He's just better than all of them. But let's get back to Forearms specifically. He's actually just, like, really strong. Like, Ben uses Forearms all the time as to this just big punching machine. You know, he's, he's physically the strongest of Ben's, uh, ten original aliens, and... It really shows. I mean, look at this guy. He's a big monster with a big red monster with four arms. He's so cool. Four arms is definitely up there for a lot of people. He's very iconic. And what more is there to say? He's the big four arm dude that punches really hard. And that's really cool. Then we have Stinkfly. Stinkfly is Ben's first dedicated flying alien. Uh, that sounds like not as interesting as you would think, but Ben doesn't have very many flying aliens in the first 10. It's kind of like just Stinkfly and Ghost Freak, if I remember correctly. And, uh, not just, sorry, not just the first time. In the original series, it's just those two. So that gives Stinkfly, like, a big niche that is actually very important. Being able to fly allows for a lot of different things. Of course, he is a Lepi Lepidopteran. Jeez. And, you know, Lepidopterans, of course, they're these giant bug-like monsters. They have wings that allow them to fly in a lot of... In uh, omnidirectional flight, if I remember correctly, even. He has the big tail stinger that can actually, like, rip through metal. And the main draw of the Lepidopteran, of course, is the eye stalks. They allow Ben to see in 360 degrees in any direction, multiple ways at a time, because he has four eyes, and they allow him to shoot a slime out of them. 
The slime can do many different things. It can either, like, hold down large enemies, be incredibly sticky, or it can explode, which is insane. I do have to mention, though, that the Ben 10 Reboot Stingfly sucks so much. I put him right there on the screen because I have to talk about how ugly this reboot design is. Like, yeah, you can make the, you could say, like, oh, you know, original Stingfly is kind of gross and all that, right? Because he's a bug. Who cares? It's a show made for little boys. Like, little boys love bugs. I loved bugs when I was little. Like, what? So, I don't know. And, like, the, the new stink fly is just kind of stupid. I don't know. I don't like it. It looks like a, like, a generic... I don't even know. A generic superhero kind of thing. It doesn't, it doesn't draw the alien kind of inspiration that all the other aliens and original stink fly really did. A lot of people really dislike the stink fly, the new stink fly design from the reboot, and I completely agree. I hate it a lot. Then, at number eight, we have Rip Jaws. Rip Jaws is actually... I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to talk about Rip Jaws. He is a... Pit, Picus Valan, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, and, you know, of course, they're like fish people. They uh, they can breathe underwater. They can swim incredibly fast. He has razor sharp claws and teeth. His jaw is actually so strong that he can, like, crush metal, like, metal objects with it. It's incredibly powerful underwater. It's just when he's not underwater, he sh sh can't breathe. You know, if he's around fire or he, like, for too long, or he's not in, like, a damp, cool area like that, he'll dry up, and he needs to breathe, he has to get back in the water. The issue with Rip Jaws, in my opinion, is that you can only do so much underwater. Yeah, if you're on, like, a water planet, yeah, Rip Jaws is kind of cool, but he's not even Ben's best, like, water-based alien that he has, like, overall, so it's kind of awkward to talk about Rip Jaws, like, when you're talking about all the aliens, but when you're only talking about the original 10, yeah, he's kind of cool, he's fish man he can uh merge his legs into a tail it's kind of it's pretty cool but overall rip jaws is pretty low for me on my uh original 10 tier list it, it, i don't know it's just not it's just not very good in my opinion like yeah he's got like the, the whole angler fish aesthetic going on but like look at this guy man he's he's goofy he's not very he's not very special if you ask me then at number nine we have upgrade upgrade is actually an artificial life form a galvanic mechamorph Asmith created them on Galvin's moon, Galvin B, as an experiment, unintentionally. And they have the ability to take over uh, machines and, well, upgrade them. They, he can make them stronger, he can make them faster, he can make them fire lasers, he can do so many different things. Uh, the main body of Upgrade is actually kind of like an amorphous goo, similar to goo, uh, which is kind of funny. So, what that, I, I, that doesn't sound like much. It sounds like, oh, you can just stretch and do all that, right? But he can actually, like, take pieces off of himself and use those to upgrade different machines and still have access to his main body. He doesn't have to put his entire body into the machine to be able to upgrade and control it, uh, which is very cool. You know, being able to control things from a distance, be, uh, you know, through upgrade and maybe control something else at the same time, or fight with Upgrade's body. His Upgrade isn't the worst uh, in, like, actual combat. He's done it a few times in the series. I don't know. Upgrade's really cool. I love the design. I kind of prefer the ultimate... Or not, sorry. The uh, the Omniverse design, where it's, like, more green than white. I prefer that design a lot. I think the white looks a little awkward in the original Alien design, but, like, overall, I really like Upgrade. He's definitely up there for me in terms of favorite uh, aliens, but... We've got one more to talk about, and it's Ghost Freak, number 10. Ghost Freak is insane. Uh, if, you, if you have watched Ben 10, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So Ghost Freak is a ecto uh, and effectively he acts like a ghost, right? He can phase through objects, he can open himself up to show these disgusting tentacles that horrify people. They, it, it's really powerful. The issue with Ghost Freak is that he's actually had a DNA sample taken from the Scare. The Scare, as we eventually find out, is a big bad villain for Ben 10. He is an Ectonure, of course. He looks a little, he looks very different than Ghost Freak. Don't get me wrong, but man, and the the real thing about him being the Scare's uh, DNA sample is that he is the Scare's like consciousness almost kind of merges with Ben when he turns into Ghost Freak. Ben just doesn't like turning into Ghost Freak. It makes him hostile. It makes him, like, angry. It makes him do things that he would never do, right? Eventually, the scare is able to take over Ghost Freak, removing him from the Omnitrix. And, like, that's insane. The fact that uh, an alien can have its own consciousness in the Omnitrix 
it has an insane implication upon the aliens that are inside of the Omnitrix, like, hey, does this alien actually have a will of its own, or is Ben controlling it, or is it Ben himself? Uh, and we don't, I, as far as I remember, we don't see something like that again. I could be wrong, I would like to be corrected if someone does know, but it's, it's crazy that they did this in a kid's show. They imply that the uh, that the aliens are trapped in this watch, things like that. It's, like, insane. Uh, I, I guess I should have gone more over Ghost Freak himself. Of course, like, he is similar to a ghost. He can fly, face through objects. He's just, all things considered, one of Ben's more powerful aliens in the original 10. Uh, it's just Ben really didn't like using it. It made him incredibly uncomfortable, and, like, it's very, very odd. But, yeah... That's going to be it for me. If you guys enjoy, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you think down below. I've never really done a Ben 10 video before. I talk about Hearthstone a lot. So I kind of, I'll admit I rushed through this one a little bit because I wanted to get things uh, through as quickly as I possibly could. I didn't want this to drag on as uh, very long. But yeah, uh, that's going to be it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Shadows are rising again. Darker than they've ever been. of